Hello, and welcome to our program, I, Hazelwood History, uh, Recollections from a School Superintendent, our Assistant Superintendent, Mr. David Harkham. This is our second interview with Mr. Harkham, and we're going to pick back up on uh, the issues that we were talking about related to the process of desegregating the elementary schools in the Sycamore school system uh, in the early 1960s. It was a very proactive process in the midst of a lot of uh, turmoil during the civil rights era. Uh, let's pick back up on Mr. Uh, where Mr. Harkham left off in our first interview. But before we do, if we could kind of bring us up to par with uh, how he got to the Sycamore school system and, and how he became the superintendent, and then let's just take it from there. I came to the Sycamore uh, district in 1960 uh, from a rural area near Wilmington, Ohio, about uh, 40 miles uh, north of Montgomery, and uh, came in as the first uh, elementary principal of the Mapledale Elementary School. And let me say before you interrupt, before, let me interrupt you before you continue to say that uh, as the first principal of Mapledale, that was an innovative school. Yes. And when the Hazelwood School, White Oak School, was closed down, all of the students would go the next year after your principalship to Mapledale School. Most of them. Most of, Most of us were. That's 80% 80%. And the, other, the others right. went to Montgomery School. Right. I was a member of that sixth grade class uh, the year after you left, and it was Mr. Rose who replaced you as mm -hmm. a principal. Mm -hmm. But, but, but go, go ahead. Well, I would, you used the term uh, in the introduction about the desegregation. Uh, I, I think that uh, I'd like the viewers to clearly understand we never used that word. It was, it was a plan to more adequately house students. Hows, yes. And how were we going to have the facilities necessary to meet the demand of a growing school district? Mm -hmm. uh, I think had we mentioned desegregation, uh, it would have worked. Well, it would have uh, created uh, more problems. <laughs> so this. So, so uh, in the whole process, in our proposals, uh, we never centered on uh, on the racial issues. But if you knew the circumstances, condition, it was obvious that we were proposing that a school, small elementary school, grades one through grade six, as I recall, 120, 30, 40 students, uh, were, that was to be closed, and then those students would be absorbed in some other schools. Mm -hmm. So it obviously had the effect of, of desegregation, mm -hmm. but uh, the political emphasis and the real emphasis was we had a, we had a, a problem of planning to house the students. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the various options, mm -hmm. uh, this came out, and it did have racial implications to it, no question mm -hmm. about it. And, and we, <coughs> we approached those, but politically, it was important that we not lead with, this is not a desegregation plan. Right, right, very good. Now I think, I think just based on what you just said, many people to this very day remember it that way, that oh, it, was, sure. it, was, it was a way of uh, basically accommodating a growing school district mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people, uh, it, it, this decision had to be made. But I think, uh, tell me if I'm wrong or not, uh, you were fully aware, based on what Bull Connor was doing oh, yeah. and based on the uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, you were fully aware that we had to, that the school system had to be proactive on this issue as opposed to responding because clearly, uh, how could the school system justify having an inferior White Oak facility? And we, we have a picture here of the White Oak School, which we showed in our last, in our last episode. If you could put the camera uh, on, give us a little close up on that. You can see that there was a landmark bell tower, and that was White Oak School, the school that I attended uh, first through fifth grade in my sixth grade year, the year of 1962-63, was when uh, the uh, school was closed down and we had to attend either Mapledale or Montgomery mm -hmm. Elementary Schools. So that was that, that, that was that, was that. But, um, but, but clearly you, you were aware of the well, events nationally. It was, it was obvious, um, you didn't even have to be very smart to know that the climate in the country uh, was focusing in to a great extent on desegregation efforts and in most cases the lack of desegregation efforts mm -hmm. and all of the confrontations and mm -hmm. the National Guard and the Army and uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the kinds of things uh, in that it was inevitable that sooner or later 
attention would be drawn mm -hmm. to communities that had an imbalance mm -hmm. in their facilities, an imbalance in the, the racial makeup and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we took, and we had absolutely no pressure from anyone mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, as I've said before, I believe if it had been put up to a vote before we ought to do something, no one had been for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, we were, we, were, we were out on the edge. Uh, but I, I would have to tell you that we had a nucleus of strong leaders in the white community and in the Afro-American community that were able to look at the big picture and mm -hmm. some leadership that refused to accuse anybody of anything and that was very very helpful and I would say a largely that related to the fine leadership of Superintendent Ed Green who had lived his whole life in the community knew everybody in the community had the respect of, of everybody and, uh, and and so he did not have a history or an agenda that anyone could say yes remember he did this 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 and now he's doing this mm -hmm. no he didn't uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's I think was very helpful. Mm -hmm. And we had a board of education that stuck together on the mm -hmm. issue. Now, um, during that time, um, maybe because many of the students uh, who went on to high school from the African American mm -hmm. community uh, would actually go to Sycamore High School. Right, right. So that process was already in place. Exactly. So there was once you once you left the elementary right. school level. You were expected to be, in a sense, desegregated anyway. A very good point, Michael, because that, <clears throat> where you were more likely to get the biggest reaction would be at high school students at the high school level. Mm -hmm. But they'd already been a part of Sycamore High School. Mm -hmm. And so we were dealing with the, the elementary, middle school level, which the students at the high school weren't excited about it because it didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was very helpful. And had it been the whole thing, I, you know, that might have been a different kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. But it, it, that's a very good point. Right. Um, you know, going back to 1949, long before you had come to the area, that had been an issue. Where were the youngsters from Hazelwood, from the uh, White Oak School? Would they go to Princeton School, which you know was an adjoining school district? Or would they go to the mm -hmm. uh, Sycamore School? And I think, of course, uh, as we know, they would end up going to the Sycamore School. Uh, there's a high, I guess it was High Point, which is, I guess, right next to, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to Blue Ash there. And that was uh, White Appalachia. Right, right, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, can you remember any uh, specific opposition or individuals in the African-American community at that time who, who, um, who opposed it, and what were their issues? I don't recall any individuals uh, who opposed it. Um, as I indicated, uh, we had very strong support from a few leaders in the Hazelwood community who understood that change was inevitable. And I don't know the interaction that took place when we weren't around, but there was no evidence that they in any way supported any strong <coughs> feeling against it. <coughs> the feelings that we had were expressed by individuals and, uh, and, and we had the community meetings and, and they very much were upset that they were losing their community mm -hmm. center. Right. The school was the center of the community. Were, were there any preparations made to uh, accommodate that? Like we, we used to, I, I can recall, we would have like <coughs> Halloween parties around Halloween time. There'd be festivals there during the summer and there were carnivals with, with ponies and well, people would yeah. come. And the, the problem was that that when we closed it down, then we put it up on the market and we auctioned it off. Mm -hmm. And from that time forward, there was no place to continue some of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember specifically, but I'm sure efforts were made to have them come to other areas. But transportation wasn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was it was hurtful to the community. Mm -hmm. It was hurtful to the social activities in the community. Mm -hmm. The churches stepped in and did, did a lot, mm -hmm. did a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I remember that, um, that the year after that happened, uh, there was an effort made, I guess, by the uh, school system, not necessarily the city, but I think it was the school system to create a summer program mm -hmm. in the community. 
I don't re I don't remember that, but and I don't remember again whether that was part of the school or or the uh, or, or the community, mm -hmm. but um, there were efforts made, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. It wasn't, it wasn't the, same. the same. Yeah, I I, re I recall that because <coughs> at the address was eleven zero four three Wood Avenue, and the address of fifty fifty Cook Street. Uh, and, and that's the address that's, that's right on the corner of the Wood and Cook. The very first playground, summer playground activity, took place in the backyard of that was my grandmother and grandfather's lot and, and my grandmother's brother. Uh, it was the back, in the back of their yard uh, was where we had our first uh, summer uh, recreational activity, which would eventually emerge into what's now Oakwood Park down on Oak mm -hmm. Street uh, on the corner there of, I guess, it's Oak and, and Idalia Avenue. Now there's, of course, the new community center mm -hmm. is there and all that stuff. And before that, there wasn't any facilities. Well, so. no, nothing, nothing there but just a, 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 a shack, uh, some yeah. weeds. And, that, and that, was a, that was a definite disadvantage to the plan because there was a period of time there that that void wasn't adequately filled. Mm -hmm. it, it was tough. It was, it was, tough. It was very it's tough. tough. Very it's tough. tough. And uh, it, it, you know, but. Uh, I think this, as, as time went on, um, when things got even more volatile in the middle, late 60s, mm -hmm. um, I don't think it hit the Sycamore community <clears throat> as much because the, the, the reasons for some of the hostilities had been taken care of. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it, it really benefited from the timing that we, that we made. Absolutely. I think the timing was absolutely perfect. Uh, and you were, took a very proactive posture, and I, and I can't think of any other school system, of course I'm not familiar with every other school system's history, that would be as proactive in that regard. I know you would go on to be the superintendent of the Green Hills Forest Park, and you had similar issues there, yeah. which, we'll, which we'll get into uh, later. I know there's, there's a dissertation written about your activities. Well, that, was, uh, that was a, a bigger, problem, uh, bigger numbers uh, at a different time and faster acting, but I would say this, I learned an awful lot from my experiences uh, at Sycamore and Hazelwood mm -hmm. uh, that allowed me to better understand the dynamics uh, of the problem mm -hmm. and to try to stay focused on the issues uh, because it's very easy to take something personally. When, when you're up in front of a group and you're accused of being uh, a racist uh, or an elitist or uh, this, that, and the other uh, by people shouting at you and threatening you, it's very easy to take it personally. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, fortunately, I learned that it's the issue. It's not me. Mm -hmm. It's the issue. Mm -hmm. But boy, that's hard to do. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people avoid dealing with some of these things because there's no easy way to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And someone's got to be out front. Mm -hmm. And it's always a good thing to try to let the other guy do it. Mm -hmm. But there aren't enough other guys. That's right, absolutely not. And, and it, it really, uh, it, it's really tough. And then when you have a history, like in the South, of all of those things, for someone to step out from the white community mm -hmm. and propose segregation, the, the, the community, the peer pressure, mm -hmm. and the business, and the political pressure, and the safety uh, is, uh, mm -hmm. is and, and if anybody in the black community tries to sit down and to work with the white community, they get a lot of pressure on them from some people, mm -hmm. and, and boy, mm -hmm. human nature and self-preservation says, why get in the middle of that? That's right, that's right. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if you don't do something, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to deal with some bigger problems down the road. So I'm, I'm pleased to have been a part of, uh, of, of what happened. And admittedly, it's very small. It's very unique. Uh, but at that time, it was dramatic and it was important. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of people that worked hard to make it work. But you believed in the process. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you believed it was, it was the best thing to do for the district, seeing the larger picture. And it was up to you to come to the African-American community, knowing that they were going to lose their community center, and make this presentation because you had to get people to buy into the larger picture. Um, Ms. Alberta shared 
was a person who, as you can recall, was a very, very dedicated educator. She was the person who was the principal of this school. For, white lady. A white lady for, for, for many, many years, and who saw the larger picture, apparently. But I think in the long run, it, it hurt her because she just became simply a sixth grade teacher at Mapledale School after mm -hmm. this whole thing happened. And you know, shortly after that, she would pass away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, you've made the point that you've got to believe uh, in something, but also I think there's a lot of believers that can be classified as do-gooders. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it because it's right. Mm -hmm. and they don't take into account the human dynamics that mm -hmm. surround that. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the issues that, that, as I recall, that caused me to push ahead, not only because it was right, but because also, from a practical standpoint, it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to do it? Are we going to have some pressures? And as you know, with all the suits that occurred, the desegregation suits around the country, mm -hmm. most communities chose not to do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you get into a suit like that, uh, that's not a good way to do it either. Mm -hmm. right. But it's tough, it's tough work, tough work. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, even by, with the Cincinnati, since, as you know, Cincinnati, <laughs> there would be a suit filed in 1963 and again in 1974, and there was a conscious decision not to bring in the suburban communities. Uh, so they were still resisting that, but Sycamore had already taken a proactive stance to say, look, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and uh, consolidate and make this quality education happen for, every, for all, of our, all of our youngsters. Well, I would have to say that. I took the leadership in the Green Hills Forest Park District mm -hmm. to make some dramatic changes that I got knocked down and stepped on and beat up and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and the program that I had proposed was not implemented. Now, mm -hmm. I think that we raised some issues and some consciousness uh, that caused some other changes to take place. But uh, this is a success story at Sycamore. Mm -hmm. uh, I was involved in another one where I mean, that got beaten up bad and from you, everybody. You were there from 1966 <laughs> to 84. To 1984. 18 years. 18 years. And uh, you saw, when you first got to that school, it was like only four or five black kids in the whole district, that, right? Right, right. Out of about 4,000 students, I think there were four or five black students. And when you left, it was about 40. 40 or pushing 40 percent. But then after you left, it kind of pushed on into the It more tipped over. It's over 50 percent now, is my understanding. And, and that's a phenomenon, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the the city government, the county government. You're talking about the real estate people. You're talking about uh, the legal representation, uh, and everybody looking out of what does this mean to me mm -hmm. personally. And it was hard to get people to look at the big picture mm -hmm. because they were going to be affected individually, no question about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, so you win some, you lose, and you lose some, but you can still fight, mm -hmm. and it's still right. And, it's still going on. Um, there were some specific individuals like Mr. Lewis. Do you remember Mr. Lewis, uh, the janitor, yes, African American yes, janitor? Yes, yes, uh, a real gentleman, and he, that was his home. It was his home. And we had to move him. I forget where we moved him to, but he, he had to go into another environment that he could not have felt comfortable in. Mm -hmm. He didn't know anything about it, and mm -hmm. he was probably the only black employee. Uh, and so it, it was. Uh, it was tough. But you tried to make. You tried to. Uh, you made efforts to oh, hire sure, African American sure. uh, teachers. Oh, but it was tough. It was tough to try to um, to try to recruit black staff members to come in to a, a staff that was almost all white, because many of them believed, rightfully so, that if they came in. They might be accused of, of, of being racially prejudiced uh, in favor of the black kids, or, and some of them just had not been in an all-white environment mm -hmm. and just felt uneasy about it. And, and uh, so it was perfectly logical. Mm -hmm. And of course, we would get beat up because we did not have enough uh, black right. uh, staff members, administrators, and so forth. And uh, it, it's just a tough process. Now, if I'm not mistaken, now you left in '66, right? That was your that was your last year yeah, there. Yeah, I left in '66. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Miss Kay Grant was the first African American hired at the Sycamore High yeah. School yeah, to I've, teach French, well, you, and you were you were there yes, to see yeah, her. Yeah. 
And then, of course, Mr. Charlie Coles, who was not a basketball yep. coach for Miami University, was mm -hmm. there also. Uh, and I think that was the next year, 67. Well, I know it was early on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Those two great people, and they, uh, I forget, I know Charlie had come from Miami, which, you know, let's face it, mm -hmm. is um, he had been, he felt comfortable in that kind of a environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he'd had his experience there. And mm -hmm. Kay, I forget where she came from, but mm -hmm. she was a real good lady. Yeah. And, and she was in, she was teaching a course that wasn't considered a basic fundamental course. Mm -hmm. It was a college prep kind of a thing mm -hmm. that uh, projected a good, a good message, I think. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I didn't know of any other African Americans to teach there during the time that I was at the yeah. school, but I'm sure right. there may have been some hired at the elementary school yeah. level. Well, many of, the, many of the communities, and there just simply were not enough available black staff members mm -hmm. um, who felt comfortable in that. Mm -hmm. so, very difficult. It's tough, mm -hmm. tough, tough. Mm -hmm. Were, are there anything else that you might be able to recall? Any other stories or anything that oh. we can? No, I'm sorry. I'm uh, again so old that uh, oh, no, no, I, my no. memory isn't uh, <laughs> as good as it might be. But it's a good reminder of some really good times where some changes were made, and I think uh, overall people benefited from it. Well, let me say this, and you tell me if I'm true or not. If this is a true statement, that your your prior experience at Wilmington. And you know this situation that you're going through there, trying to get that school system to change, had prepared you to some extent for the change that was inevitable in the Sycamore school. Well, I felt I felt comfortable in um, in uh, working with Afro Americans. Mm -hmm. I'd gone to school with them and knew some uh, adults, and and uh, I felt comfortable uh, in that way, where some people that came from an all-white community and never had any experience. Mm -hmm did not and uh, and I knew that uh, as in the white community um, parts of the black community had more abilities and other parts of it the same way in the white community and mm -hmm. and uh, but there were good people everywhere mm -hmm. and many people you don't know how good they are they have a chance to show it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so so in, in essence it was you that took the lead on this issue well I don't know I I cannot remember all the timing and all the dynamics, but I felt I, I was pretty verbal in uh, in in saying how how I thought it was necessary, and and I had the opportunity to be the spokesperson mm -hmm. in some groups on it. So, um, yeah, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, this has been a magnificent interview. Great history of the Hamilton County area um, and the Blue West area and Montgomery area, very specifically. And we've been really, really blessed to have Mr. Harkham as part of our um, studio uh, guest. Thanks again. Thanks, Mr. Harkham, for Thank coming. Thank you. And, uh, indeed, indeed. And uh, hopefully this won't be the last time okay. uh, That's good. we interact.